Hey guys, my name is Wade. Today I'm going to show you how to get started with Audio Director for recording voiceovers, whether for YouTube, podcasts, or whatever you want to use your voiceovers for. I'm using Audio Director 365 version 14 in case your version might look slightly different. This video is not intended to teach you how to be a sound engineer as I am not one of those. However, Audio Director 365 comes with some very good options that may help improve your voiceovers. That said, your first priority is to make sure you have a decent microphone and a decent environment to record your voiceover. So let's get started. When you first launch the program, you're going to be presented with a screen like this, Audio Director 365 or whatever version that you have. You have the option to start with mix or edit clip. We're going to start with record. Once you are inside the program, you're going to be presented with this right here as a profile setting. So you can set your profile here to record in 48,000 Hertz or 44,000 Hertz, whichever option that you like. So I like to start with 48,000 and then for the bit depth, I like to start with 16 bits. We will have different options as well. And for the channels, you can record in stereo, all those other options. I like to record in mono because I want to use with only one track. That way I'm not worried about multiple tracks, but that is just my preference. You can decide to go with stereo. So if you're happy with this, click OK. Now, the first thing that I always do before I start any of those programs is to go to find the preferences and go to edit, or you can just click alt plus C on your windows. And then that would also bring up the preferences. So I click on preferences and then here you can go through all the tabs to see if there is anything that you would like to change other than using the default settings that the programs gives you. So here, just check what you need to check. And if you're happy with everything, then you're good to go. And then for file settings, as I showed you before, because I already set mine, these are the settings from the preference that you saw earlier. I'm already set mine to 48,000, 16 and mono. Again, you can change this from here. That way, whenever you start, your profile will give you this option. So if I'm happy with this. I keep this. And for the project, you get all these options right here. Then this is about saving your files where you want your files to be. If you want to just mess around with savings. And then at the very bottom here, you have where you're going to save your production. That means whenever you finalize your product, it's going to go through here. So you can select an external drive or you can select a C drive or wherever you want to save it. That's what you got here. Just click on the three dots and then it will take you to your folders and your computer and you can select whatever you want. And as far as this right here, if you want to auto save your thing for every five minutes, you can do so, or you can just go with two minutes or three minutes or whatever. So I like to keep mine at two minutes. That way I don't miss anything. If you're happy with those, just stay there. And now for the audio settings, this is where you can select the mic that is going to be used for your recording. So whatever mic that you use with your audio interface, it should show here. And then you pick one from the one that you are going to use. And for me, it's this one right here. And for your default output, it's whatever you're going to use to listen to your playback, whatever it is just select it from here. You have multiple options. Just choose the option that is relevant to you. And then for the hardware acceleration, just click this. And then for the Cyberlink cloud, you can make a backup copy so you can select this. That way, if something happens to your computer, then you have it on the cloud and you can always come back here and restore it from Cyberlink cloud. And then on the very bottom, you where your folder is going to be downloaded. You just select whatever option is important to you. And for the improvement program, this is a way to give them feedback if they want to fix certain things or improve the program. And you can decide whether or not you want to participate. And if everything is good, then you click OK. Now, in this interface right here, you have the record tab 
you have the edit tab and you also have the mix tab if you're someone that likes to produce music that might be the best tab for you but for this tutorial we are gonna go with the record tab but the difference between the two as you can see the mix one has a master tab and if you hover over this right here it will tell you exactly what master track is and you can go from there but we're gonna stick with record now for the recording track you got to make sure that everything is set up here so you have some options here here you can just change your icon to just to indicate whatever you are doing whether you want to record piano guitar or whatever you're trying to do for this example we are using human voice so i'm just going to use this little icon right here just to remind me i am using this track for human voice and for this icon right here the picture of the microphone you have to make sure that it is enabled otherwise you won't be able to record like for instance if it's not enabled and you're trying to record you're going to have this message right here that say there are no tracks enabled for recording so you got to make sure that this is toggled to the right position and that way you can start recording and then uh, those other options don't worry too much about them just don't mess around with those and here for the track you can change the color of the track here if you don't like the color that it comes with and also you can give your track a name so we're going to call this test you don't have to but we're just going to give it a name or you can leave it as track now once your track is set now the next thing you can do you don't have to do this but i would recommend that you do this just save your file just give it a name you're going to have an option to say save project as and here you're going to give it a name that way your file has a name and as you can see right now it says youtube test as the file name now when you think you are ready to record your voiceover just come down here you're going to see the red circle you're going to click on it to start recording but there's also a drop down arrow that gives you some options and there's options right here you can either on click or click them i personally like to use it the countdown timer so you have a five second you can change it to three or four or whatever so i change it to three now once you're ready to record you just click on the red button for recording the timer is going all right this is a recording to test audio director this is just a test this is only a test now once you're done recording you can either press the record button or the stop button and now you have a file that you're recording as your voiceover now that you have a file you what you can do you can just go and save project that way you're not missing anything the next part is to go to the edit portion of the video so we're going to click on the edit tab as i said before since we are using in mono we only have one track to deal with and here this is where you can make your adjustment to the file to make sure that you have a good audio file to present to your audience and on the very bottom this is where you can control the file here you can start playing the file. Now we're gonna start recording our voice and we can say whatever we want just for the purpose of this video. This is how you control the playback. And on the very bottom of this, you can see you have some controls to use for the file so you can do it for whatever you wanna do. Here you have the zoom in for horizontal, put it back to normal and here you got the zooming for vertical so if you start clicking on this it's gonna go vertical now we're gonna start the using all the options that audio director 365 offers you and you can start with the edit tab and you have all these options this option is to boost your volume if you want to use it and you get all those options that you can mess around with to see if they can change your audio if you want to fix your audio if there's any problem with your audio that you think you can fix with those options just use them if you don't like them just don't use them but 
I personally like to use the restore options. I don't use the restoration assistant because it never seems to work the right way. As far as I can tell, I stay away from this. But when I start doing my production, the first thing I do is trying to use the noise direction. Now I am not an expert in the program, so I stick with the default. But before I use any option, I always use the preview so I can listen to it and see if it's going to make any difference in my audio. So if I like the way it sounds, then I go with apply. And then if I'm okay with that, then I go with that. Then I go through all the other options that you have here to make sure that they work for me. I'm not going through any of those things. All these options that you see right here are plugins that you can use to make your audio better. A lot of them from other programs, they cost a lot of money, but this program gives them to you for free. Now, how good are they? is going to be based on your preference, whether or not you think they work for you, but you can use them to make your audio a lot better. Now, once you use all those things that you think that may be relevant to your voiceovers, and if you feel happy with what you have, then it's time to do production. So you go to produce. Now in the profile, I just got to give it a name. So I'm going to call the YouTube test. And I already have a location where I've, I save it on my external drive. And if you want to save a copy to the cloud with the Cyberlink, you can just click this one. And then for the format, we're just going to go with MP3. And then for the bit rate, you can choose an option here. I keep mine at 192 and then the sample rate 48,000 Hertz. I keep this since I like to produce my audio in mono. So I'm just going to click mono here. And when I go to my program that I'm going to use for YouTube, then it's going to be fine. And then once I'm happy with everything and here, I'm just going to hit produce. Now my file is done. And if you look on the left side, you can see that the YouTube test MP3 is there. You can play the audio if you want to, but if you're happy with everything else, all you got to do, just close the program and then just find your file, wherever it is saved, and then just put it in your video editor and you can upload it to YouTube. But the last thing that I'm going to tell you, if you are using any of those program, whenever you hover, over any of those options, there's a selection right here with the question mark. If you click on this, it's going to take you to a YouTube video. This may help. This may not help for a lot of people. Those tutorials don't help. So you just do whatever you got to do, but the options is here for you. Just use it and see if it helps you out. Anyway, that's all we have. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.